Hey, if you're looking to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, then you need to stick around for the next few minutes and learn how to have an effective quiet time that produces spiritual growth. Three things we're going to do in this video is number one, learn exactly what a biblical quiet time is. Number two, understand why we have a quiet time. And then number three, we're going to discover what a quiet time looks like. This video has been sponsored by Bedshore. Bedshore knows how important it is to get a good night's sleep so that you wake up feeling refreshed and ready for whatever the day may bring. That's why they only use the softest, coziest, high-quality blankets and bedding products like this eight-piece bed in a bag. They offer a ton of great options for whatever your budget allows. Get the best night's sleep every night with Bedshore. You can check out their products by clicking the link below. Now, while you listen to this video, I want you to be sure to take notes and check out the description box below because I have a lot of this information there for you to copy and paste in a Word document. Now, what is a quiet time? In John 15, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, we've all heard it said that Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. That's right. That just means that our faith is not a series of rituals, customs, or traditions, but rather it's a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, his son. And it's about remaining, abiding in his presence. So now listen, this is important. A relationship happens when two or more people are connected by blood, by marriage, or by the sharing of mutual ideas. We have family relationships, romantic relationships, work relationships, teacher-student relationships, community relationships, group relationships. These relationships don't happen out of obligation. I mean, we don't have to do them out of duty, but desire. In other words, it's not a have to, but a want to. And the relationship is maintained, sustained, built and strengthened by spending time in one another's presence and communicating with one another. Now the same is true for our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I mean, we desire to be connected to him, to spend time in one another's presence and to communicate with one another, fostering a growing, healthy, vibrant relationship. Quiet time then is an expression of this truth. It's a regular appointment that we keep with God that allows us to block out all other distractions and focus on our connection with him. One thing to remember is that maintaining a regular quiet time is not the goal and it's not the point. Maintaining a close connection to Christ is. Number two, there's some benefits of quiet time. Other than strengthening our relationship with Christ and growing spiritually, it keeps us more mindful of God's presence. I don't know as if you've ever noticed this, but one of the biggest challenges that I have in the Christian life is to remember that God is always with me. I mean, I know this naturally and spiritually, but I seem to forget it throughout the day. And it's not intentional, but there are times that we just simply don't think about and forget about God. I mean, it's easy for us to get preoccupied with life and we lose sight of the fact that, that God is right there with us, present in every moment. You see, when we have a stable connection to Jesus Christ built upon our daily practice of spending time with him, God's presence becomes more central to our everyday behavior. It becomes easier to stay mindful of his existence and his nearness throughout the entire day. So let me tell you a few things that you need for quiet time. Everyone has scheduling conflicts, so let's, let's not use that as an excuse. I know that it can be a challenge to find a regular quiet time that works, but as much as it is up to you, find a consistent time of the day for daily devotions and make it a regular appointment. Seriously, put it in your calendar on your phone, write it in your planner, do whatever you have to do to keep that time. Now, some people have their quiet time at night, other people have theirs during the day after lunch, but I wanna challenge you to consider doing it first thing in the morning. You see, spending time with God in the morning starts your day off right. Sure, you, you might need to get up a little bit earlier to get your morning quiet time in, but that makes it your quiet time. In the morning, the Bible says, Lord, you hear my voice. I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Number two, location, location, location. Find a place that you'll be able to focus with as little distraction as possible. Maybe it's your favorite room, your favorite chair, your favorite table, favorite desk, basement, outside, inside. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a place where you're not going to be so comfortable that you end up falling asleep or getting distracted. 
By the way, in the comments, I want you to tell me where you have your devotions and what time of the day you get that done. Number three, there's structure. Don't just jump in and start randomly reading. Be intentional. So you need to have a regular reading plan, maybe a devotional, have your prayer concerns right there, and, and maybe a journal. And you need to answer these questions. How long will your quiet time be? How much time will you spend reading, praying, journaling? Now, I'm not saying that you need to be a clock watcher or you need to set a timer, but what I am saying is that you want to make sure that you're investing time on those habits that are most important. For me, I think it's time in the Word and time in prayer. Now, this is what you could do during your quiet time. You could read the Bible. Focus more on reading than studying. You see, Bible study is great and it's an important discipline that we need to practice, but I think that that should be separate from your quiet time. Second, reflect on what you have read. As you're reading, ask these questions, and I'll put these questions in the description below, but is there a sin to confess, a promise to claim, an attitude to change, a command to obey, an example to follow, a prayer to pray, an error to avoid, a truth to believe, something to praise God for? Is there something here that I can be thankful for? Then as you ask those questions while you're reading and after you have read, respond. You see, when you read and reflect on God's word, God is going to speak to you. And when he does, it's your time to respond to him. And then finally, rest. Don't just get up and leave your quiet time. Rest for a moment in God's presence, and you'll be glad you did.